I was part of a clinical trials team that investigated the impact of oral azithromycin on the carriage of bacteria that are associated with maternal and neonatal infection. And the intervention was very promising in that the results were positive. However, there were negative results, one of which was that the intervention resulted in a significant increase in the resistance to one key bacteria, um, which is called Staphylococcus aureus. As part of my PhD, I set out to in investigate further what has been the impact of the rise in the resistance to azithromycin for Staphylococcus aureus. When I looked in the genome of Staphylococcus aureus, what I found was that the dominant gene associated with resistance was the macro uh, MSRA gene. However, when I looked at the resistance in the long term, there was no significant difference between those mothers and babies exposed to the azithromycin um, compared to those that were not. So I went on to investigate how long did this resistance that we observed shortly after giving the antibiotic lasted in the population. And I was able to show that, in fact, although we saw a high increase in resistance, 12 months later, the resistance disappeared. This is very important to me personally, because oral azithromycin given during labor will ultimately help to reduce the high burden of death that occur during both maternal and neonatal periods. As part of my research, I had the opportunity to get training in bioinformatics where I was able to analyze whole genome sequences of Staphylococcus aureus bacteria, which is the key bacteria that is associated with neonatal and maternal infection. I was able to get train, training on whole genome sequencing and bioinformatic analysis of this whole bacterium and try to understand, in addition to looking at courage and resistance, but also what has been the impact of the intervention on the total genome of the bacterium. My research is important because ultimately, if my research and other research within the field are proved, found to be successful, it will lead to the introduction of a public health intervention in the Gambia and in many other developing countries that will eventually lead to the reduction of maternal and neonatal death.